I am absolutely certain that I learned more consciously about English grammar from six years of teaching Latin. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudoua, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Chief Marketing Officer. Our goal is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. Hey, Julie. Hey, Andrew. Do you want to hear a joke? Of course I do. I think you'll get it. I think you'll get it. Not everybody would, but we'll we'll try. Uh, So there's this boy, and he's in Latin class. Okay. But he's sleepy and kind of dozing off because he stayed up too late playing video games the night before. Mm. And the teacher calls on him and says, you know, Billy, and tells him to, conjugate a particular Latin verb. But he doesn't hear because he was dozing off. So mm-hmm. he says to his buddy sitting next to him, what does she want me to do? And uh, his buddy says, darn if I know. So he stands up and says, darn if I know, darn if I nas, darn if I not, darn if I namus, darn if I not, this darn if I not. <laughs> yep. Okay, there's another joke to okay. help clarify there. Okay. Um, what did the the... Latin verb say to the Latin noun. I would ask you to conjugate, but I'm afraid you'll decline. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's right. Yep. So anyway, I you told me we were going to talk about Latin today. Yes. And so here's the interesting thing. We have a lot of customers who want to know more about learning Latin, and they want to know from us how to teach their kids Latin. But when I page through our catalog, which I am doing right now, I see nothing in here. We don't carry anything to help people learn Latin. But yet this is something that you often speak about as a way to learn grammar. And just it's a good thing to know so that you can get your jokes. (laughs) Well, yes. uh, You know, the purpose of a great education is so you can get every joke. But, you know, I have had personally a tremendously valuable experience of Mm -hmm. teaching Latin over the last decade plus Mm -hmm. a couple years, I guess. And I do have that talk, but, but, but what about grammar? Right. And so I talk about Latin there. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of the people I meet are in this world of, do I have have to do Latin mm-hmm, right. on one end of the extreme mm-hmm. to, I love Latin on the other extreme. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And most of the kids are somewhere in the middle, like, yeah, I do Latin. Right, yeah. So I did that to my homeschooled sons, two of them. You did? I did. They, they learned Latin. Yes, in fact, my oldest son took four years of Latin in high school. You're welcome, son. Because, and by taking four years of Latin... He didn't need to do the foreign language requirement in college to graduate to get his Bachelor of Arts. Oh, well, that's very handy. I know. So he was not very happy with me in high school having to be suffering through four years of Latin. But he was very happy that he didn't have to do that one semester in college. But my youngest student said, I don't want to take Latin. I want to take Spanish because Spanish is infinitely more useful, especially oh, because yes. we were in Southern California. Yeah. Ironically... My oldest son, that same one that took four years of Latin in high school, is teaching himself Spanish now as an adult and is actually doing great with it because, of course, Latin is one of the Romance languages, as is Spanish, and they're based pretty similarly on the same Yes, I've even heard crass comments about that, such as, (laughs) Spanish is just bad Latin spoken quickly. (laughs) I thought that was Italian. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, it could be. Yeah, you know, yeah. Whoever wants, you can pick on whatever language you want to. But it is interesting, this question of is Latin useful? Mm-hmm. Because people say, well, nobody 
speaks it, except for very, very odd people mm-hmm. who go away to week-long camps where they just try to talk Latin with each other right. for a week. But in the world, I, I would say it is used, of course, in a very narrow and specific way by the Vatican. Oddly, all new official documents from the Vatican mm. are officially released in Latin and then translated into all the other languages. Interesting. Because it is the historical kind of universal language of the of the church. But uh, one reason as to why that might be a good idea is you can't really equivocate the meanings of words well in a dead language. Hmm. So you can look at words in English and people push the limits on what that word can mean and how it's used and pretty soon the definition is entirely different. Mm -hmm. And you can't really do that with a dead language, which has led some people to quip the only good language is a dead language <laughs> mm, right? <laughs> because right. it's it's kind of permanentized. Uh, of course, the Vatican then has to come up with new Latin words for things that didn't exist. Internet, for example. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so that's, that's one bit of trivia mm-hmm. some people may not mm-hmm. know. But uh, there are many people who go around talking about the benefits of learning Latin. Mm-hmm. I remember... My moment of conversion and fear (laughs) happened as I was listening to Cheryl Lowe, Mm -hmm. who was the founder of Highlands Latin School, Memoria Press, and a good friend. And she uh, passed on a few years ago. But uh, she was giving a talk, The Top Ten Reasons to Teach Latin. Mm -hmm. And I sat through this talk. And by the end of it, I just thought, oh, no, this Mm. is so horrible. I'm going to have to do this yes. because, you know, where I live now, there's no one who can teach Latin to my kids and the other kids around. And if it's going to happen, I'm going to have to do it. And now I'm totally convinced it has to happen. Right, right. So uh, when we lived in California, we were blessed with a woman who taught Latin classes. She was actually a high school Latin teacher Mm -hmm. in previous years, and now she was teaching Latin classes after school, mostly for homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really pay much attention. I just had, you know, a couple of kids were going to Latin class. Okay, great, you know. Although it is interesting, our whole family went down to South America for, well, my wife and the kids were there for three months. I had to make a couple different trips because I had to rush back and run around and teach some writing classes to help pay for the thing. But <laughs> it was interesting. The, the girls who had studied Latin caught on to the Spanish and particularly the Spanish grammar and vocabulary mm-hmm. much faster than the ones who hadn't had any experience right. with the language. So kind of you know, echoing what your son and many people have mm-hmm. said, that mm-hmm. Latin is a fantastic foundation for any of those other Romance languages. Right. I took three years of Spanish in high school. And so when my kids were learning Latin, it, I, I got what they were doing, you mm-hmm. know, especially with the verbs. The nouns, not so much. Mm-hmm. So. Well, you know, I, I suppose we could go over some of the reasons as yeah. to why yeah. Latin has benefits. Yeah, and n- no pressure. Let's hear all 10. No, we'll put a link in the show notes to that article that she wrote. You're right, and that's available on Memorial Press website. Right. And, uh, you know, I, th- I guess I would look at it from, number one, vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have heard the number, and I don't know who actually figured this out in terms of statistical verifiability. Mm-hmm. But I have heard people say that over 60% of English words of three syllables or more are derived from the Latin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have people who go into law or medicine or really science of any sort, and the vocabulary is very closely derived from the Latin words. Mm -hmm. Uh, So by having a foundation of Latin vocabulary, you can very quickly intuit the meaning, acquire facility with, get a a more in-depth experience Mm -hmm. of the higher level of English vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And that same 
idea is reflected in the people who like to tout that students of Latin score higher on SAT language. I was waiting for that stat. Yep. But you know that is that the reason?、Mm-hmm. Probably not.、Mm-hmm. I mean, you could you could say, well, that may be correlation, not causation.、Mm-hmm. Kids who would sign up for Latin might also be the ones who just love English and language stuff in general, and would say,、mm-hmm. you know, I like that. Study it harder and do better on a mm-hmm. test. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sad to hear that there are colleges today. That do not accept two years of high school Latin as the foreign language requirement. Oh, interesting.、Hmm. And so that's kind of a shift. Whereas、mm-hmm. probably forty, fifty years ago, two years of Latin would have looked better on a transcript than two years of French or Spanish、sure. or whatever. Wow. But what I have noticed is mostly understanding of grammar,、mm-hmm. and I have many times. Pointed out the problem with studying English grammar is that you kind of already feel like you know everything, so you don't really need to learn it. What's the point?、Mm-hmm. I've used this illustration that teaching an English speaking, a native English speaking person, English grammar is kind of like saying to your son, "Son, sit down. I'd like to teach you how you ride a bike." And the kid's like, "Dad, I know how to ride a bike." Yes, you do, but you don't know all the physics and biology that make bike riding possible. You need to know this. And the kid's like, he would be. What's the point?、Mm-hmm. Can I just go ride my bike?、Mm-hmm. Really?、Mm-hmm. And so we have that kind of the curse. What, what do you call it? The curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge.、Mm-hmm. We know how to speak English.、Mm-hmm. We know just by hearing if something is right or wrong,、mm-hmm. but we don't necessarily. Have to explain that to ourselves、mm-hmm. in order to function well, using English pretty close to perfectly in our daily work. And that's of course true when you're speaking for a couple reasons. One, usually the listener forgives some of your little oopsies when you speak, like don't use a nominative case following a preposition. So between you and I. Right. It's not correct, you know, which I cringe every time I hear that. But we forgive that in, in because we've all been taught by our parents a long time ago.、Yep. No, no, no. It's you and I are going to the store. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, but that's a nominative case because that's the subject. Right. But then when we do that in writing, we don't forgive that. So it is more important to know this in writing, which is why learning grammar, English grammar, is a good idea, even if you're an English speaker. Right. And. English, in a way, is the hardest language to use、mm-hmm. to learn things like case,、mm-hmm. because we just don't need it to function, and it's not nearly as clear.、Mm-hmm. And that's one argument as to why Latin is the best language to study if you want to understand the structure of language,、mm-hmm. because it is extremely well organized. In terms of number of exceptions and goofy things, and、um, oh come on, English has no exceptions, no <laughs> goofy things. <laughs> you know, variants that entered、mm-hmm. in over the centuries. Right. Latin has been pretty stable and pretty complete,、mm-hmm. and so when you learn to decline your nouns, you learn case.、Mm-hmm. That information in case. Transfers over when you try to translate stuff into English,、mm-hmm. and then you understand. Oh, that's why we do that in English, and you conjugate the verbs, and there you learn the tenses. And it's so much easier to learn the tenses when you learn a system with all of the tenses in this kind of organized, schematic way.、Mm-hmm. So you know, I I am absolutely certain that I learned more consciously about. English grammar from six years of teaching Latin than I did from the previous fifteen years of teaching English.、Mm. So you know that's that's another I think good reason. And then another thing to look at is just the process you have to go through, say to match an adjective to a noun. And because there's gender, case, and number. And declension, there's a lot of variables there, 
And so it's actually almost training the mind in logical process, hmm. right? It can't be that, it can't be that, must be that. Now that has to go with this, but it can't do it that way. It has to be this way. And you're going through many steps, way more than just four steps. You're going through maybe a dozen steps of logical process to do that correctly. And then the more you do it, what happens? The faster it goes. And so you actually learn to think faster in learning that language. And I'm sure, I'm sure that's true with other languages. It's just so beautifully organized mm -hmm. in Latin. So what you just described made me think of the music analogy, which we talk about a lot here. You can either memorize a composition or and kind of play it by ear and figure out how to play a piece just by virtue of listening to it and try to imitate that. Mm -hmm. Or you can do the music theory route where you know, you know the circle of sharps and all of the, the – all the – I'm speaking about music as if I know something about it. So if my son who does know music listens to this podcast, he'll probably be really embarrassed about right. what and I'm saying. But then you, what you just described was essentially the equivalent of music theory, whereas you know I can memorize a passage, say, in Scripture in Latin and then kind of learn to intuit how the language works or not. Well, yes. Uh, both are – obviously very important. Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments for Latin is that when you study it, you don't necessarily waste a lot of time trying to learn how to order coffee and oh, right. <laughs> get a taxi because right. that's not going to be useful. <laughs> and and so the there's an emphasis tends to be on the the grammar, the understanding with the goal of being able to read and translate. Whereas most foreign language classes in schools today are oriented toward culture and conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's learn about how people who speak Spanish live mm -hmm. and learn to talk like that mm -hmm. and practice. Mm -hmm. And there's value there, but you don't necessarily get deeper into the grammar. And I think all of us have the frustration of having taken two or three or more years of a foreign language in high school or college, and we really couldn't go and have a three-sentence conversation with anyone, even at the time we were in the classes. Right, right. So, you know, both are important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess, you know, the question that people kind of have to wrestle with is, what has priority? Should being able to talk the language take priority over being able to read and understand and translate and know the grammar of the language or vice versa? Mm -hmm. And so with Latin, most of the time people get into it with that more scholarly mm -hmm. side rather than the more colloquial side. Right. So are you teaching any Latin classes today? No. no. Uh, <laughs> I. Um, so I, I was convicted mm -hmm. by... Uh, Cheryl's talk, mm -hmm. and I, I came home from that and said, "Well, I guess I'm going to have to do it." Mm -hmm. And so I put out the word, "I'm going to teach first year Latin class," and I had 21 kids. Oh my word! Between get this age range, age 10 and 17. Oh my! Inclusive. Okay. Right. So the youngest was 10 years old. I think my my youngest daughter was that age or mm -hmm. close to being the youngest in the group. Mm -hmm. And I had one girl who was 17. Mm -hmm. And we just all started with first year. And we were all learning together because I didn't know it. Uh, what I did realize is I had to study about five times as much as most of the kids because my brain was 50 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... I wanted to have more speed and fluency, at least so I could look like I knew something. But, you know, a question would come up and the kids would, someone would ask a question. And I'd just be like, I really don't know. But mm -hmm. I will try to find out and let you know next time. Mm -hmm. And then I would call my, my secret source of Latin mm -hmm. expertise or, or email and get that question answered and, and then bring the, bring the answer. And then we would all learn little by little. Mm -hmm. But it was it was actually a great year, 
And what I discovered, of course, is that the mixed age group was not a problem at all, mm. because quite honestly, some of those littler kids were getting it and learning the vocabulary and being prepared for the quizzes and the classes better than some of the older kids.、Mm, right. And so, you know, whether you're 12 or 15, it it didn't have much bearing on was this going to be. What would I expect a, a 15-year-old to do better than a 12-year-old? No, I、right. wouldn't. I mean, there's a lot of variables and factors involved there.、Mm -hmm. But it was kind of nice to have such a widely mixed group, and we're all just beginners. And then、uh, the next year, I said, "Okay, we'll we'll keep going with second year." And I lost、mm -hmm. a couple of the older ones who、sure. timed out. And I gained a couple transfer in who actually had had some Latin before.、Mm. I think so. I think I had about the same number, twenty two, twenty three kids, and things got a little stiffer. And I had to study, and I would get up at you know seven in the morning, and I would log like an hour a day, wow, copying the stuff、mm -hmm. and quizzing myself. And I downloaded Quizlet on my phone, and every time I had a spare minute in the airplane or whatever, I'm drilling myself on Latin. Vocabulary, and I got the SPQR app, and it can drill you on,、um, you know, verb and noun endings and all that stuff. And link in the show notes for the SPQR it's, app. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a very good one. And、uh, so it kind of became a just a part of my life. And、uh, third year got even trickier. But then I had all kind of younger siblings of those kids. So I took the oldest. Girl in my group who was really doing quite well.、Mm -hmm. In fact, she she was starting to study beyond、mm. what we were doing in class because she was so interested. So I set her up to teach a group of first year students while I was continuing to teach the third year, and、uh, and then we got there, and then we went fourth year and second year, and then the fifth year. Uh, we kind of finished the series we were using, so I had to go into something that was、uh, a little, a little more academically rigorous, even. But you、mm -hmm. know, fifth year it should、mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Sure. And、um, and then I got my next kid down, who, interestingly enough,、mm -hmm. at this moment is our customer service manager. Right.、Uh, and she took on a first year group. So、mm -hmm. at the peak, I had a. Fifth year group, a third year group, and a first year group all going at once,、mm -hmm. with two classes a week, and I was like supervising and coordinating all of this stuff. And and so it's no wonder, Andrew, that you talked or and continue to talk so much about your Latin experience because you were truly immersed in all of this for years. Yes, it it was. It was a really important part、mm -hmm. of my my life. And then, you know, my my youngest kids. Timed out, and at that point, I just thought, if they want to keep going with it, they will.、Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm pretty much done.、Mm -hmm. Although, I am very tempted in the next couple of years to start over again、mm. because of grandchildren、oh, coming into、true. the age range、yes. where they can now start. Oh, so, that's true. You know, one of the questions a lot of people ask is, you know, what's a good grade or age、mm -hmm. to start? And certainly, there are things that you can do with very young children, right?、Uh, such as memorizing simple songs, simple prayers. You know, like you would start a foreign language with children、mm -hmm. who are five, six, seven, eight years old, right? But in terms of looking at it from the more textbook approach, I think around ten、yep. is pretty good.、Mm -hmm. Fourth grade ish.、Mm -hmm. I think Highlands Latin School they start. Their formal textbook Latin stuff、mm -hmm. in grade four,、mm -hmm. and、uh, continue that for seven years, right? And then give the kids an option of going and doing a couple years of Greek、mm -hmm. at the end of high school, or sticking with very advanced Latin, advanced beyond where I will ever、sure. ever get, like Virgil.、Mm -hmm. But、um, you know, I think that's that's a good age range、mm -hmm. to、mm -hmm. think about.、Uh, you want to be able to. You know, read pretty fluently in English. Although interesting, I had one girl in my class. She was possibly the most dyslexic human I ever met.、Hmm. Kind of side by side with 
my son, though mm-hmm. he was a few years older, she couldn't spell. She was in my writing class, too. She couldn't spell any English words. Mm-hmm. The poor girl would attempt to write a word, and literally 90% of the time, it would be wrong. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't stupid, mm-hmm. smart as a whip kid, just profoundly dyslexic, and English is is hard. But uh, what was interesting is she could spell the Latin words better than English words interesting. because she had started when she was older and uh-huh. she hadn't got all that English scrambling around in mm-hmm. her brain at the younger age when it was worse, to, you know, mm-hmm. harder to sort it out and all that. So, and she, and, and then my son, you know, he said to me one time at the dinner table, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> he goes, oh yeah, Latin has helped me a lot with English spelling. Interesting, yeah. And sure. I just, and he was probably what? 13 at the mm-hmm. time. Right. So, you know, that's that's a good one. You know, the the other question people say is, well, what's the best curriculum? And that's was going to be my next question because I know we're going to be asked that. Well, you know, I don't answer it. It's true. He doesn't uh, answer it. Listeners, don't ask. What, what do you do it. when you've got, you know, several friends who mm-hmm. are publishers of Latin curriculum? Yeah. Yeah. I will say that I very much enjoyed the structure the presentation, the organization of the Memoria Press mm-hmm. materials. And that's what you used when and you taught classes. what I used, yeah. the first form, second yeah. form, third form, fourth form, and then that goes into Henley. Right. Classical conversations, they start with Henley one. Right. Well, actually, they have a, another program that they use for their youngest students, and that's Classical Academic Press's Latin program. Okay. Latin for children. Le- yes, and yeah. that, that you know, Andrew, you were talking about the singing the songs, and song learning. school Latin. That's, that's it. Yeah, just a really delightful yeah and program for the younger kids. Th- th- both of them are good. Mm-hmm. I you know I don't I wouldn't say one is going to be better or easier to use than another. Right. I do think that one is kind of designed to look more clear and organized. Mm-hmm. And the other is designed maybe to look a little more fun mm-hmm, right. and engaging. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's people using Cambridge and Wheelocks. And mm-hmm. so there's a lot of options out there. I guess what I would say is if you're thinking about doing this, mm-hmm. don't be afraid of not knowing it. It's kind of like anything, you know, you may be put in a situation of having to teach something that you are learning along with your kids. Uh, that is true for parents and teachers who have never been taught how to teach writing, Andrew. Yep. Yeah. You just stay once you just have to be a little bit smarter than your kids that you're teaching, right? <laughs> you know, stay a few steps ahead mm-hmm. and you know, in a way, not knowing it mm-hmm. like the back of your hand is an advantage in that you have a little bit of compassion. Right. Because you're having to kind of struggle right along with the students and realize this takes time. You have to be careful. What are some games that will create the repetition that will make it easier? You know, it's, it's kind of like music again. Sometimes the best performers mm-hmm. don't make the best teachers because they forgot what it was like to not be great. Right. <laughs> exactly. Whereas, you know, people who struggle to uh, – learn something, Mm -hmm. they have a little more understanding of what it's like to be trying to learn this. So don't be afraid of Latin. Don't discount its value. There are a whole lot more reasons that Mm -hmm. we could get into Mm as why, you know, I think it's the best foreign language to start with. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you want to add to that Spanish or French or Chinese Mm -hmm. or Japanese. Uh, And it's funny because uh, Japanese was the only foreign language I really Learned learned much because I lived there three years. And what's really interesting to me is that the structure of sentences and the use of grammar in Japanese Mm -hmm. is actually a bit closer to Latin than it is to English. Huh. Did not know that. No. And I, you know, that was kind of fun. It's like, oh, in Latin, you often put the verb at the end of the sentence. Mm -hmm. They do that in Japanese as well. Mm. Oh, in Latin, you use different endings for right. different purposes. Oh, they do that in Japanese as well. As Andrew Pudua would say, that reminds me of a joke. We have to end with a joke. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, let's see. There's a couple more Latin jokes. The uh, centurion walks into the bar and holds up two fingers and says, I'll have five beers for my men. Yes. <laughs> or 
The centurion walks into a bar. I don't know why you have to have walk into bar jokes, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. centurion walks into a bar and says, I'll have a martinus. <laughs> Bartender says, uh, do you mean a martini? Centurion says, no, if I wanted more than one, I would have asked right, for it. Exactly. Okay, coming late to the speech, the Cicero. Oh, yes, that the one more joke. You remember that. Of course I do. I've, I forgot that. Yeah, so the senator walks into the Senate and uh, Cicero is speaking. And um, he's, you know, he's late. And so he sits down. He says to the senator sitting next to him, what's he talking about? Mm-hmm. And the other guy says, don't know yet. He hasn't got to the verb. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, there you go, listener. Andrew's take on why learning Latin is valuable, but no official recommendation for a curriculum. We'll just stay neutral on that. We will probably never carry one in our own catalog because it's a little bit, a little bit off of what we're doing. Well, you know, we've we've said so many times. Why don't we sell this? Why don't we sell this? That's we so could true. sell that. We could add that to what we sell, mm-hmm. and then pretty soon we're not Institute for Excellence in Writing. We're trying to be everything. Right. And there are other people who yes. are doing that be everything thing better than we are. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you, Andrew. Very helpful. Thank you, Julie. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcasts. Here you can also find show notes and relevant links from today's broadcast. One last thing. Would you mind going to iTunes to rate and review our podcast? This really helps other smart, caring listeners like you find us. Thanks so much.